Hi all. Today we are going to discuss wave packet and its tidal moment. So we already discussed um, the quantum mechanics in detail. So in quantum mechanics, uh, we know that the fundamental equation is the Schrodinger equation, and it was in terms of uh, uh, the wave function. And uh, the Schrodinger equation is given as minus h minus i h cross. Sorry, plus i h cross dot i by dot t is minus h bar square by 2m dot square psi by dot x square plus v psi. Okay, so this is the uh, Schrodinger equation. And uh, once we solve this, we'll get uh, the wave function as a function of position and time. So this is the case of one dimension. In three dimension, we have to replace uh, the del square by the dot square by del square. That is the only difference. Okay. Now this the wave function has uh, no direct physical interpretation. The physical interpretation is for mod psi square. The mod psi square gives a probability density. Now we can start with a very simple example of a non-localized free particle. So what is going to be a non-localized free particle? The free particle means the potential is zero, V is zero. And non-localized means the particle can move from minus infinity to plus infinity. That means there is no restriction for the, the free particle or for the position of the free particle. So therefore, for a non-localized free particle, the uncertainty in position is uh, infinity. Delta X is infinity. Now, what is the solution for uh, uh, this non-localized free particle for the Schrodinger equation? So if you solve the Schrodinger equation, we'll get psi of xt is some a, a raised to i, kx minus omega t. So this is a plane wave solution. So this plane wave solution means uh, the harmonic solution. So this solution means this uh, wave function, the variation of wave function with position would be like this. It, it, it can go from uh, minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, so there is a wave function, the graphical representation of wave function. What, what about uh, uh, its probability density? So if you plot the probability density, or if you find the probability density mod psi of x t square is simply equal to mod a square. So it means the probability density is a constant. It's throughout the space from minus infinity to plus infinity, uh, the probability density is same. It is, it is equally likely to find the particle at anywhere between the minus infinity to plus infinity. So that is what is meant by the uncertainty in uh, the position is infinite. Okay. So uh, if you plot this graph, so this is uh, what, what we have originally plotted is the wave function of the free particle psi of xt. And if you plot uh, the mod psi square, the mod psi square is constant throughout. At all point, the mod psi square is constant. Okay. Now, what about this k and omega? So this k actually gives the momentum of the particle. And we can see here, the momentum of the particle is finite. So P is equal to H cross K. And uh, the energy of the particle is H cross omega. So this particle has a definite momentum. So an, an, a localized or sorry, a non-localized free particle has a definite momentum and uh, the wave function can be found in this form. Now what about a, a localized free particle? Suppose uh, the particle is kept inside a one dimensional box or something else. Then what about um, its uncertainty in position? So if it is localized, then it cannot have infinite uncertainty in position. The, the uncertainty in position is finite because uh, most of the spaces, the, the wave function is zero. So there is no probability to find the particle uh, at those places. So uh, the, the uncertainty in position would become finite. So if the particle is localized, if the particle is localized, then the uncertainty in position is finite. Then what about the momentum? If the uncertainty position is finite, then the correspondingly the uncertainty momentum is also finite. 
so that means it can have more than one possible values for momentum so the localized free particle a localized free particle can have more than one momentum so then how will you represent its wave function so if it can have more than one momentum for each momentum uh, the wave function can be written as a plane wave okay as uh, we discussed here so this is a case of uh, a particle a free particle with a definite momentum so for each momentum for example if you have momentum p1 p2 p3 or k1 k2 k3 etc for each uh, the k values we can write a plane wave solution so therefore a a total wave function would be the superposition of all this wave function according to the superposition principle so according to the superposition principle we can say that uh, the wave function of a localized uh, free particle uh, can be viewed as the superposition of plane waves with a different momentum now such a combination of such a fierce combination of uh, uh, the wave function is called a wave packet okay so uh, what what we have discussed is uh, if you have a localized free particle then its wave function is a superposition of the large number of the plane waves large number of harmonic wave and such a superposed wave is generally called is a wave packet so this wave packet is superposition of large number of waves with various momentum so that is the the key highlight of uh, this session and uh, hence the total wave function of this wave packet uh, can be mathematically we can write in this way let's say your text we can have a slightly uh, bigger highlighter okay so psi of xt is a integral a of k a raised to i k x minus omega of k t d k okay so what we have simply done is we have superposed uh, uh the different the wave numbers the, the waves with the different wave numbers so this k corresponding to the wave number okay and uh, graphically we can represent a wave packet for an illustration purpose we can uh, graphically we can represent uh, uh, one example of wave packet like this so it is an example of a wave packet so here uh, if you find the mod size square will get the probability at uh, each location so the probability here is uh, zero the probability here is zero so uh, there is an uncertainty up to the position uncertainty is up to this length which so we can find the value of delta x and it is also possible to find the uncertainty momentum as well okay so this uncertainty is limited it is not infinity if the uncertainty is become infinity then the uncertainty momentum would become zero because uh, the product of delta x delta p that is when delta x tends to infinity then delta p should tends to zero so that its product should become finite and that is what is the uncertainty principle delta x delta p must be greater than or equal to h cross by 2 if delta x becomes very large when it goes to infinity this delta p should goes to zero so when delta x is very large delta p should goes to zero and the momentum will become a definite value momentum will approach a definite value and delta x is finite then delta p would also be finite and the corresponding uh, wave function now become a wave packet okay so in order to illustrate uh, uh, the the dynamics of the wave packet we can take a very simple example the the example that we have drawn here is not very simple it is a slightly complicated one and we can have very simple example so for the illustration purpose we have discussing about the gaussian wave packet okay so gaussian wave packet so gaussian wave packet the the graphical representation that i have already given here so the wave function at position at a uh, different location x at time 0 can be graphically viewed like this so it is peak that x is equal to 0 and when it is move away from uh, origin that is uh, either uh, both sides the wave function slightly decreases okay so uh, this is a kind of uh, a uh, wave function for a localized free particle this is one possible the wave function for a localized free particle and its mathematical form is well known so the psi of x0 can be written as 1 by root a pi raised to 1 by 4 e raised to minus x square by 2a square so here we can see a term a this term a 
is connected with uh, the uncertainty in position. So this X, this A is connected with the width of this wave packet. So when A increases, the width of the wave packet increases, that is uncertainty in uh, X increases. So this delta X is equal to A. And when A decreases, uh, the this wave packet will become, or this Gaussian wave packet will become very sharp. Uh, its peak, uh, its uh, its width, width would become very small. Okay. Now, what about its time development? So the psi of x t, the time development of this wave function psi of x t, can be written in this form. It is integral phi of k raised to i k x minus omega of k t dk. We definitely this uh, wave function has uh, more than one momentum. So once you uh, we have to know the relation between uh, the energy and momentum for this case, that is omega and k for this case in order to find the wave function. So uh, the next step is we can expand this omega k in Taylor series about some k value k zero. So omega k can be expanded in this form. So omega k at k0 plus k minus k0 d omega by dk at k0. And uh, it's the next term, the second derivative term plus etc. So the first term is a constant omega of k0. The second term is d omega by dk. It is uh, connected with, so this can be interpreted as the groove velocity and uh, just denoted by symbol vg. And the second term is connected to the dispersion of the wave and it is denoted by the symbol beta. Okay, now once you uh, integrate this, it is possible to find the psi of xt at the wave function at later time. And we can find its mod psi square, the probability density. And what we, have, what we are interested in is the probability density. Okay, I, I am not going to show all the mathematics behind this. Uh, I am going to interest in the final result. So what happens when time evolves? So the final result I am going to write. So finally, for this... Uh, the Gaussian wave packet, the probability density, sorry, the probability density mod psi of xt square can be written as pi by square root of a square plus beta square t square. Then we have an exponential term, a raised to minus a, x minus vgt plus two, a square plus b square t square. So this shows that, so if you look at uh, this term, you can see that the probability density uh, decreases the probability density at each location decreases with the time if beta is non-zero. So if beta is non-zero, the probability density is decreases with time. And the other thing is, if you look at this exponential term, x minus vgt square. So this x minus vgt square shows that um, the, the entire wave packet uh, move forward with speed vg. And that is what is called the groove velocity. So this wave function, if you if you plot this or if you look at its time dynamics, we can see that uh, this this entire function it move forward it move forward with velocity v. So that means if v g is zero, that is if there is no groove velocity, then we cannot see any uh, the movement of this particle or this uh, uh, the wave function. Uh, the wave function remains there. It will its peak will not move forward. And this, uh, the, if you look at the denominator term, so in the denominator term there is some a square plus uh, beta square by t square. So there is a beta, and beta we already said that it's a dispersion term. So if uh, beta is non-zero, then we can see a dispersion uh, in the in the graph. That is, uh, if initially a graph is like this, then after some time the graph would be like this. It will be dispersed if Vg is zero. If Vg is zero, then the peak will remain there. The peak will not move forward. If Vg is non-zero, then the peak would also move. So if, if this is for Vg is zero. If Vg is non-zero, then case will be like this. The peak is moved slightly in the forward direction, okay? So uh, this is the case, this is the, uh, the dynamics of uh, the wave packet. And uh, when, when time evolves, the, the wave packet can have dispersion and it, it would also move from position from one place to the other place. Okay, and uh, we can have uh, some feeling of this equation 
by plotting this uh, the same expression in GeoGebra. So that I, that I will show here. So please wait. Okay, so this is the uh, the uh, GeoGebra file that I have already prepared. So here you can see a, a psi of x. The psi of x is basically uh, mod psi square. And um, uh, here there are uh, certain, uh, okay, you, you may not be seeing this. Okay, you can see here. So there is uh, a few parameters, the dispersion, which is beta, and uncertainty x, and the uncertainty x is connected with a value and groove velocity vg so we can have some uh, uh, okay so initially we can make uh, the groove velocity zero uh, if required and uncertainty uncertainty you can change if you want if you increase uncertainty you can see uh, the the width uh, widens the width of the uh, goes in peak widens and if if you decrease uncertainty you can see it becomes sharpens okay the, the width become decreases okay so if you have some groove velocity and there is, if there is no dispersion, then uh, when time goes on, uh, this wave packet will slightly move forward. So see, uh, I have made beta zero and uh, the un initial uncertainty, which is uh, uh, delta x, which is equal to a, connected to a, which is 0. 0.6 and the groove velocity is 0. 0.8. And once you start this, when time evolves, you can see that this is simply moves forward. Okay, so in the time evolution, there is no dispersion. Okay, we can stop and reset it. Now we can include uh, some dispersion in this problem. If you include dispersion, then when time goes on, it moves forward as well as it, it widens. Okay, so I think this, uh, uh, this GeoGebra animation gives some feeling of what happens when uh, the time evolves for the, the probability density for the particle. So remember, this is this I have plotted is for the probability density is mod psi square, not direct wave function. Wave function we cannot uh, uh, we cannot plot it properly because certain issues with if if it is complex wave function it is not very easy. Only its real part can be plotted. Okay, so. Uh, uh, that's all about uh, uh, the uh, discussion about the wave packet, its time dynamics. So this is simply a session. So we can just summarize once again. So we have started with um, uh, the non-localized, sorry, uh, a non-localized free particle. So a non-localized free particle will have a definite momentum and uh, infinite um, uh, uncertain position. So uh, uh, that such kind of free particle can be written by this wave function. And whereas a localized free particle would be a superposition of this particular wave function because uh, a, a localized free particle we can have more than one momentum. For each momentum, we can write this solution. And therefore, the total wave function would be superposition of all such solutions. And uh, in integral form, this wave function can be written in this particular way. And uh, if, you, if you want to find the exact expression or if you want to find the probability density, we have to calculate this integration and um, uh, do the mod square, okay? And for that, we have to start with uh, some uh, the initial wave function. We should know what is the initial form of the wave function with the wave packet, then only we can find out uh, the later form of the wave packet. So for the illustration purpose, we have started with the Gaussian wave packet of this form. So the initial uncertainty, this delta x, remember the delta x is equal to a, it is the initial uncertainty in position. And uh, the this uncertainty increases when time goes on if there is any dispersion in the problem. Okay. And uh, we can see here, uh, the when while you are solving this omega of k, we have expanded it and we, have, we can see the different terms in this Taylor expansion. And this first derivative of omega is connected with uh, uh, the velocity of propagation of this wave and the second derivative is connected with the dispersion and the total probability density is coming this form and uh, it's this entire uh, dynamics that I have shown you using GeoGebra. So I think this gives the uh, the entire feeling about how 
the V function or the V packet evolves with time. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. Uh, so for references, you can see uh, the Tangapen textbook and as well as uh, uh, this one textbook of uh, Griffith of quantum mechanics, which discusses uh, the time dynamics of the wave packet. Okay, so once again, thanks for watching.